All right, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another many interpretations of video where today we are looking at the very strange, bizarre, and awesome looking Dinochirus. Uh, Dinochirus is not a dinosaur that shows up too frequently in media. And of course, many of you have pointed it out uh, in the last poll. Uh, and you know, it still did win the poll, so it's one that we are looking at, and it's still a very fascinating dinosaur to take a look at. It's one that we kind of caught early in its, uh, you know, uh, portrayals in media, because it's one that we've semi-recently started to learn more about. It's one that was always shrouded in mystery, and now we're getting a better picture, and so now, as a result, it's gaining in popularity and is showing up in more media. But we're still going to take a look at the interpretations that it does have, even though this will be a relatively shorter list, uh, which actually helps me a lot because I have been having a very busy, uh, busy time with videos and with just real life things. So this will be kind of like a nice little break in terms of this, this series because we have had a lot of really long videos as of late. So anyway, let's get right into it. Now, first up, we have Bizarre Dinosaurs. Now, Dinochirus, as I said, is a dinosaur that was initially shrouded in mystery. And that's because it was first discovered from its huge arms. Those were the primary pieces that we had to tell the story about this very strange dinosaur. Uh, we didn't have a lot to go off of with those arms. Of course, it was labeled as like a predator and things like that. Now, Bizarre Dinosaurs portrays it as basically a type of Therizinosaur, which is fair because those arms are very Therizinosaur-like. Therizinosaurus is known from having huge arms with huge claws, and Dinochirus is semi-close to that, uh, but more fossil material was found, and we got a very different look at Dinochirus. And it's even stranger, in my opinion, than a, a Therizinosaur. So, Bizarre Dinosaurs, if you were like looking at it when it was released or i mean looking at it now and you didn't have the context of the history of dinochirus you'd be like why the heck does it look like a therizinosaurus <laughs> but so that's our first that's our first look now second on this list we have a little project that i don't know about called land of dinosaurs i have not really been able to find anything else about it i've been able to find this image right here which i think represents dinochirus at least that's what it says it doesn't look like a Dinochirus, of course it looks like a Therizinosaur, which matches up with bizarre dinosaurs, but even the claws are extremely off to what we even knew about Dinochirus claws. Of course, Dinochirus claws were big, but not as big as this. Um, so I don't know if this is actually meant to be Dinochirus. I don't know where this project is, I haven't, really, I haven't been able to find anything else about it, so if you guys have any, any information about Land of Dinosaurs, be sure to let me know in the comments. But after that, we have Amazing Dino World. I love this portrayal. This is a fantastic portrayal of Dinochirus, um, mainly in the design. Now, this is where we finally step over, we cross the threshold into a better idea of what Dinochirus looks like, because we have a lot more fossil material, which includes things like that very interesting looking beak, the hump that the animal possessed, uh, and, you, you know, other things like it's a giant ornithomimosaur. That's one of my favorite facts to tell people. This is an ornithomimosaur, the same clade as Ornithomimus or Gallimimus or Struthiomimus, it's, this shares very close relation to those guys, which is absolutely insane, and it's the largest Ornithomimosaur as a result. But anyway, back to this design. Again, I love it. The colors, I think that the dinosaur as a whole was inspired from a spoonbill. Uh, you know, this one in particular, I can't remember its exact name, but I'll have the name up here, uh, because this one has sort of like a pink coloration and the beak matches up uh, to a Dinochirus. So I think that is a very cool inspiration behind this type of design. And I just especially love the type of feathers on top of its head that flare out whenever it's in a defensive stance. I, I just, I really like this portrayal. Um, that documentary is definitely hit or miss in terms of a lot of designs. Uh, like I really didn't like some of the Tyrannosaur designs, but this Dinochirus I think is really good. Then there's Dinosaur Train. Um, I think that this is still at basically a point in time where we weren't really too sure about the way that Dinochirus looked, um, or at least maybe it like was past that point, but of course I know animated projects take a while to do, so I, who knows if they really had the information, because of course Dennis here does not really look like a Dinochirus. He is a young one and we never see an adult Dinochirus, so maybe this is just what baby Dinochirus looks like. Uh, but he lacks the, the beak and he has four claws or four fingers, really four digits instead of three, uh, lacks feathers. I mean, feathers are certainly a topic. There is a debate on whether or not Dinochirus had feathers because it, like, if it was too big for them, uh, it might've just had sparse feathering or more so downy feathering 
or if it was just too big for feathers altogether. Like that, that's certainly a debate. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of paleontologists do apply feathers to Dinochirus because other ornithomimosaurs possess them, and due to phylogenetic bracketing, you would apply them to Dinochirus as well. Uh, so that's why we mainly see feathered interpretations, but there's still a jury out for sparse or no feathering. Uh, but anyway, back to Dinosaur Train. His, I like his colors, though. The blues with the kind of purples uh, look really good. Uh, and he looks like a fun little character. Like, that's probably very important. I mean, he has the huge arms, which are very important for Dinochirus. So success in that area. Then the very famous prehistoric planet Dinochirus. This certainly looks absolutely incredible. Uh, the feathering is probably a bit off. It's a little bit more shaggy of feathering. As I mentioned before, there's a debate on what, what kind of feathering Dinochirus had. But if we were like applying through phylogenetic bracketing, other ornithomimosaurs have sort of downy feathering. So you would probably apply that to Dinochirus as well. In, in terms of feathering, that would probably be the safest bet. So the feathering's a little bit off, but that's really just a nitpick in the grand scheme of things because this design is just beautiful. It has the hump, it has the beak, uh, it's portrayed eating, uh, you know, the vegetation and things like that. Uh, and I love the blue on its on its face right, right in front of the beak. I think that this design is so incredible and there's a reason why so many people place it as their profile pics. You know, it's just that iconic of a design. And it's just great seeing it do real animal things in the documentary. I mean, I've talked about this a little bit, but that's one of the reasons why I love Prehistoric Planet. And that's because we see these animals do real animal things more so than just fighting, hunting, and killing. Uh, and seeing the Dinochirus just trying to scratch an itch and things like that in the in the show was just really fun to see and so, so different. Like, you have a dinosaur that has massive claws and and like you know would definitely be used for defense in some aspect most documentaries would take that opportunity to have a, a huge fight scene but prehistoric planet doesn't do that instead it shows yeah probably use them for scratching too sometimes it can't scratch an itch so it, it uses a dead tree I like Prehistoric Planet. Now, one project that I absolutely need to mention on this list is the short film, the 2023 short film, The Hatchling. Uh, this is a fantastic short film. It was done by Digital Duck here on YouTube. Uh, so definitely go and watch that if you haven't already. So its short film does possess Dinochirus as well with an amazing design. The adult designs look incredible with incredible patterning and incredible colors. Um, I really won't say too much about this short film as a whole uh, because I just, I, I think that other people should go and go and watch it because I think it's phenomenal. Uh, so all you really need to know going into it is that it's a great short film and it has great dinosaur designs. And then we'll move on to video games. First up, we have Paleo Pines. This is a very good design too. Uh, the different colors that it has are really fun and interesting to look at. The head is something that throws me and my wife off a little bit. I might as well mention my wife uh, because this is one of her all-time favorite dinosaurs. Uh, actually, this right here, this little Dinochirus figure, isn't even mine. This is hers. We just place it on the shelf to add another dinosaur to the mix. Um, so she has an input on, on a lot of these designs too, and she loves the the spoonbill be beak more so because of you know that's the beak that we know Dinochirus had. And this this doesn't have it. Like overall, she loves the design, and I love the design too. But the fact that it doesn't have that type of beak is something that really kind of throws you off. Uh, but again, mainly just a nitpick and another great design. Then we have Jurassic World Alive. Again, with the head. This head really reminds me of a dodo head. So that's interesting. But it does have the it does have the hump and it has feathering, has the huge claws, the hands that are breaking themselves, you know, they're being pronated. Uh, but, it, you know, it... it captures the essence of Dinochirus. It looks more like a Therizinosaur with a dodo beak, a dodo head and beak. Um, but, you know, it's it's stylized for the game that it's in. Then we'll move on from that to the Jurassic World, the game Dinochirus. And again, the head is a lot more like this. I'm not really too sure if these two are a result of us not knowing a lot about Dinochirus, but they, again, they look a lot more like Therizinosaurus in this aspect. This one in particular, you can see a little bit of the Dinochirus hump, but not too much 
to the point where it can, uh, you know, stand out from maybe the Therizinosaurus in the game. So it's just an interesting to the, the design. The the level 40 is very fascinating. It has some extra uh, extra flares on top of it. And give, it they give it some brighter colors, but, you know, probably decently low on my list of favorite Dinochirus designs. Then we have Prehistoric Kingdom. Uh, Prehistoric Kingdom never fails with their designs. Their Dinochirus looks fantastic. Like, maybe it's a little bit too shaggy in some of the skins, but the colors look great. The, the skeletal structure looks fantastic with the beak and the hump and the huge arms. But one thing that is also notable is that you do get the option to have a uh, featherless Dinochirus. And this kind of loops back to what I was saying about the debate on whether or not it truly did have feathers or not. Uh, so that it's cool that they give you that option. And this is the first time I've seen like a skeletally accurate Dinochirus without feathers. You know, mainly for the most part, when we saw the the uh, Dinochirus without feathers, it was not skeletally accurate. So this is like one of the first times you'll see a skeletally accurate Dinochirus without feathers. Isn't that just absolutely fun to look at? But anyway, I love Prehistoric Kingdom's take on the animal. And then Jurassic World Evolution 2, another Jurassic uh, World project. This is my favorite out of the Jurassic World designs. They really nailed it with the feathered species pack as a whole. Um, the Dinochirus is just no exception. Skeletally, it looks great. I think the feathers look great and the animations are fantastic. And it's just like an absolutely massive and just like a beast of an animal. Like there's a lot of different uh, other dinosaurs in the game that it could just take on and just take them on successfully. Uh, so it's one of my favorite dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution. Every time I make a new park, I usually include it in said park uh so i i think evolution 2 really killed it with this this design and then we have another one of my favorite designs of the animal path of titans this is one of the few instances where we get uh, a feathering that's a little bit more plausible with the type of downy feathering and the longer feathering on its arm uh very ornithomimosaur like this skeleton looks great the it's a huge animal. They do, in the game, you're able to, it's a semi-aquatic animal, so you're able to swim with it, uh, and you can eat things like fish, which is not something that I've mentioned yet, but uh, Dinochirus is, a, it did have a piscivorous diet as well as being an herbivore. Uh, we have evidence of both. I forgot to mention that for Amazing Dino World because it portrays it doing both as well, uh, which is, of course, an accurate uh, depiction of the animal. And, and here you're able to eat fish as well as uh, vegetation, which again is accurate. I don't know how efficient Dinochirus would be at swimming. Like, I don't know if it'd be as efficient in the game, but that's mainly a, a gameplay thing anyway. You know, it'd be kind of kind of boring if you could just like hunt fish, but not really be too efficient at hunting fish, you know? It's likely that in life, Dinochirus would snatch them out of the water, you know, something along those lines. Once again, 10 out of 10. Now, Ark Survival Evolved does not have a Dinochirus in the game, but I know that it does have a mod. And the mod... I think the modders did a really good job with it, uh, trying like fitting that arc style. Like they certainly killed it in that area. I really, really like the way that the face looks. I don't know why. I mean, it doesn't look too much like a Dinochirus uh, bill, but I mean, it's it's flat in that type of way. So I, I just think it looks cool. I don't know the the sparse feathering. I think looks cool too, and it has the huge arms like Dinochirus had in life. So very, very cool mod for the game. Uh, and I don't know. It, it just kind of looks wicked. And then finally, I know that there's some concept art for Dinochirus in the aisle. Uh, so I will take a look at that because, you know, of course. And I think it looks really cool here too. Uh, I like the beak. I like the hump. And the hands are absolutely massive. That, that, like that looks like it'd be a lot of fun to play in the game with just those massive hands like that. And it seems like in, in the concept anyway, it has more of the downy feathering. Uh, so... I don't think we know too much about it yet. I mean, there's some concept sketches of it. Uh, it looks like it will be opting for more of the semi-aquatic, much like uh, Path of Titans, though. We're not really seeing it swim as efficiently. Uh, I feel like that role will mainly be filled by Bapiosaurus, but of course, Bapiosaurus is a lot smaller. So who knows what direction they take Dinochirus when it eventually does get added to the game. If they stick to, the, to this type of design, I think it'll look great in the game. And that's pretty much it. Of course, this is one of our... our 
shorter videos in the many interpretations of series. Uh, and, you know, that, that's fine. You know, these dinosaurs are awesome. If a dinosaur gets voted, then I'm going to happily uh, cover it, even if it doesn't have too many, many interpretations. Uh, the next one I am torn about. We are approaching 10,000 subscribers, and as I promised, I do want to make a Tyrannosaurus Rex video at 10,000 subscribers, uh, but at the same time, that we still have Edmontosaurus. Uh, I'm not going to do an, another poll because of that, because you know it was basically down to Dinochirus and Edmontosaurus, and Edmontosaurus really hasn't been, uh, you know, it hasn't been winning the polls at all, hence why it's the last one left. So I want to get to Edmontosaurus before T-Rex, I think. Um, I'm not really too sure if we're going to surpass 10,000 within the next couple weeks. We might. I might be completely surprised, uh, but if we do, I think I'll still try to get the Edmontosaurus out uh, video out before I do that, uh, because I, I just don't think I'll be able to release the T-Rex video right out at 10K anyway. It might be a little bit delayed, uh, but it'll still be made as uh, a special for 10,000 subscribers. So, probably be looking forward to and Montessori's. Uh, I will probably be making a community post explaining that as well for anyone who possibly misses this portion of the video, uh, but look out for that. I am very excited to do that one because I think Edmontosaurus is such a cool and underrated dinosaur, so I'm, I'm very excited to see it, uh, see the different media interpretations of it, and see how many times it became T-Rex food. That's very common. I feel. Anyway, so once again, be on the lookout for that. That is a very exciting video. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and have an awesome day.